yes, we are in this uh, environmentally efficient Prius because we are taking two ducklings from their foster's house out to the Long Bottom Bird Ranch where they can move in with the rest of the birds and become a member of the pasture of misfit ducks. Where they can live out a happy, long life of food and safety and listening to me sing. It's gonna be great. My name is Jimmy Longbottom, and I am the owner-operator of the Longbottom Bird Ranch. I wrangle all the birds. I was a bartender for my entire life, never stepped foot on a farm, I don't think. Uh, and I lived in a really residential neighborhood when this began. I came out here with just this one little house, wooden house that I had eight ducks in. I couldn't have had further from uh, any farm experience if I tried. Yeah. I don't know if I'm an animal rights activist. I care, you know, like a lot of people, like we're, we're all animal lovers, right? And uh, I just took it a step further and decided I just really wanted to run with that. And I just love animals, but specifically uh, ducks, I guess. Uh, there was, I think, a need or just an awareness that, you know, people didn't know that ducks had this issue. They're an animal we see every day, like a bunny rabbit. And people are like, well, they're, if I buy one as a pet, it can live in the wild. And once I realized that that is not the case, that they're suffering, there was just a, a need for someone at least to tell people. What was that? What was that? What'd you say? You'll see a lot of videos of really cute ducklings wearing like little miniature cowboy hats and doing cute stuff. And that leads people to believe that having a pet duckling is a great idea. But the problem with the domestic duck is they're bred to be so big and their wings are smaller so they cannot fly. But people don't know that. So they get a pet duck. They think, I don't want this anymore. I see ducks at the park. Why don't I drop this duck with those ducks? And what ends up happening is uh, that duck freezes in the winter or gets picked up by a coyote because it can't fly away. It can't migrate. So what we do is we take in those ducks, rehab the injured ones, keep them forever, and hopefully uh, try and spread the word about the plight of the domestic duck. I'm trying to remember. There's so many ducks. I don't know, like, why do I have these ducks again? <laughs> when I talk about my motivation to come out here every day, as someone who had a lack of passion about anything for most of their lives and then tripped and fell into something that they, you know, really cared about, finding something to really care about. Uh, I feel really lucky to have found that. So no matter how hard it is sometimes, it's... The hardest part of caring for the ducks is the uh, time and financial burden of it. We are only uh, ran off of donations we get uh, and the money, however much money I can generate at a, at a job. I have someone who works in restaurants that will make a ton of money. The more ducks we add, uh, the more expensive everything gets, obviously. We always have to buy feed every day. I'm feeding them. So donating to the Long Bottom Bird Ranch via a GoFundMe we have set up, Venmo, PayPal, you can go to any of our social media channels and find that stuff. But if you're someone like me, uh, I can't give to other causes. I don't have the money and a lot of people don't. There is the biggest way that you can help ducks in general is to share that message, help us amplify that message about domestic ducks, domestic waterfowl, and why they can't survive in the wild like wild ducks. So if you've got social media, share some of our stuff or post about it yourself. That's an easy, free way to, to help, help our mission.
These are the ones I have to sing to. We don't talk about blues. 